All right, section 3.1, part one, is on the derivative of a function. So this is all stuff that we have done before. It's not really a review. All right, it's just a, it's a review. We're doing uh, the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But now we're calling it something new. Instead of slope, we're calling it the derivative. <laughs> so that's the word that you're going to hear a million times in AP Calculus. All right, so AP Calculus grew out of four major problems. Uh, you'll see these often on the AP cal Calculus exam. So we've talked about most of them. Number one is the tangent line problem. Uh, two is the velocity and acceleration problem. Three is the minimum and maximum problem. And four is the area problem. So we've talked about the tangent line and the area. Those are the big ones. Um, all of these problems deal with limits, which you guys have just learned about. The word tangent is derived from the Latin word tangens. Anybody know what tangens means? Touching, that's right. Good job, academic team. <laughs> Euclid's original definition of a tangent related to a circle. Um, when they talked about the circle, they said a tangent was a line that intersected a circle once and only once. So it intersected only in that one point, so it just barely touched the circle. But this definition obviously doesn't apply to other curves because we could have a tangent. It touches in that one point, but then it crosses your curve later. So it's crossing over here. Um, so tangent line is a line that just touches a curve at a particular point. The line goes in the same direction as the curve and is the best linear approximation to the curve at that point. So basically, if you zoom in just in this location right here, zoom in really, really, really close, um, the curve looks like a line at that point, and it looks like that tangent line. Okay, we have worked with the tangent line problem in section P1 and section uh, 2.4. In the last section, we found that the slope was... The equation I just talked about, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, you can see this formula written in many different ways. There's a few listed. So the first one is just the change in y over change in x, which, make, which makes sense. And then you say as the change in x goes to 0. So as you get closer and closer to a particular x value. Um, you could say f of x plus the change in x, right, delta means change, and so on. Or you could say um, the limit as x approaches a, you have f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. That's basically saying that you have some kind of curve, and these two points on your curve are going to get closer and closer together until they're just one point. So you're finding the slope between those two points, and then those points get closer and closer together. I personally like the first formula. That's probably going to be the one you guys will use all the time because we used it so much before, um, but use whatever you're comfortable with. So number one, find the slope of the tangent line to y equals 2x plus 5 at the point 3, comma, 11. All right, so we're going to do, we're going to find the slope. So we're going to do m equals the limit as h goes to 0, just like before, f of x plus h. So I'm going to have... Instead of 2x plus 5, I'm going to have 2 times x plus h plus 5 minus f of x, so minus 2x plus 5. But when you do these, I would put parentheses around the first part, the f of x plus h, and the second part, so you know you're subtracting out the entire f of x. That's one of the biggest errors people will make. Divided by h. So we get the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus 2h minus, or plus 5 minus 2x minus 5 all over h. 2x minus 2x, 5 minus 5, they cancel. So you have 2h over h, which is just 2. So that means your slope is 2. It doesn't matter what x value you have because the x is all went away. So it's always 2. Why does that make sense with this line? <laughs> yeah, the slope is always 2, right? So a line, you don't have to do all that because the slope is always just the number right there. So your slope is 2. So at the point 3, comma 11, what do we think this tangent line is going to be at the point 3, comma 11? Y equals 2x plus 5. It's going to be the exact same line because we have a line, so the equation of the tangent line is the same line. So you can plug in 
you can do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and plug in 311 and a slope of 2 you will get the exact same thing you'll get y equals 2x plus 5 so you can write same line duh I should have guessed that so pretty easy for when it's just a line let's get a little bit harder so find the slopes of the tangent lines to y equals x squared minus 2 at the points 3, 7 and the point negative 4, negative 18. All right, so we're going to go through the same process. We're going to find the slope. You don't need to write the formula if you know it. So I'm going to have x plus h squared minus 2. So that's the first, f of x plus h minus x squared minus 2, all of it, divided by h. Square everything out. Cancel. So x squared minus x squared, negative 2 plus 2, that should always happen. The 2xh plus h squared divided by h, so we're going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. I brought the h into both pieces. As h goes to 0, it's just 2x. So your slope is 2x. Now x is determined by what point you're at. So we have the points 3, 7, and the point negative 4, uh, negative 18. So for the first one, so we'll write 1, we're going to do this, the point 3, comma 7. So for that one, the slope is 2 times 3, which is 6. So I'm going to have y minus y1 is 7 equals m, so 6, times x minus 3. Remember, you can leave it in that form on your AP test. And somebody did that on their take-home test where they made a mistake simplifying. So that happens sometimes where you guys make mistakes when you try to write in y equals, and then you don't get points for the answer. You would get it wrong. Okay, so the second one. So the second one's for the point negative 4, negative 18. So in this case, m is going to be 2 times negative 4, so negative 8, because our slope was 2x, right? So it's y minus a negative 18, so plus 18, equals m, so negative 8, times x minus a negative 4, so plus 4. So that's your equation. Okay, a little bit harder. Not too hard, though. That wasn't too bad. So now let's get a little bit harder. So find the slope of the tangent line y equals 1 over x at x equals 0. Hmm. Does anybody see like a red flag already? It's 1 over x and you're at x equals 0, right? Yeah, it will be undefined. So let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and find the slope anyway. So if I find the slope, I'm going to have 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x, all of that divided by h. So how do I find this limit? Common denominators, right. So I'm going to do x over x on the first piece, and I'm going to do x plus h over x plus h on the second piece. So I get the limit as h goes to 0 of x over x plus h times x all together. And then minus parentheses x plus h, right. You're subtracting out that whole thing. All divided by h. We get the limit as h goes to 0 of x minus x, so that goes away, and then minus h, so I have negative h over x times x plus h, divided by h. So we know that's times 1 over h. So you can erase it and write times 1 over h. So that way our h's cancel. So that removed the um, piece that made it undefined. Now as h goes to 0, what's my answer? 
negative 1 over x squared, right? Okay, that is the derivative of 1 over x. So derivative is slope. All right, so then our slope, so at x equals 0, is 1 over 0, so it's undefined. And that should make sense, because some of you guys know that graph of 1 over x, because we've talked about it so much. You know it goes like that. <laughs> My end's kind of weird. So if you talk about the slope at x equals 0, where well, there is no point at 0. And so when you talk about your slope, it's just going to be, I mean, it's never going to get to 0, but it's going to be that vertical line. So the slope is undefined. All right, so it says, as you saw from the last example, the definition of tangent lines does not apply to vertical tangent lines. Uh, what would be the equation of that tangent line? So the one that I just drew in blue, what's the equation of that line? Zero, x equals y equals, x equals, right, x equals zero. Okay, so the process we've used is called differentiation or taking the derivative, you can call it differentiation those different things, it doesn't matter. So taking the derivative or differentiation. Um, this is one of two main concepts in calculus. So usually when you talk about a calculus course, there's a first semester and there's a second semester. The first semester is all derivatives. The second semester is all antiderivatives, so the opposite of derivatives. <laughs> all right, so this is all. This is all that we're doing. Derivatives all year long. All right, um, with the AP test, though, since it's in May, it's a little bit earlier than the end of our semester, we start antiderivatives before um, you guys go on break. So we'll start it before all that. All right, so definition of the derivative of a function. The derivative of f at x is given by f prime. So f prime is how we write it. It's not a curly one. It's like a footmark, like that, f prime. That's how we read it. Equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So some of you guys are big cheaters, and you are in uh, physics right now. And Dr. Fesker has taught you the shortcut method, and you guys all know the shortcut method. But until we all learn the shortcut method, which will be soon, you guys have to do the long way. So you guys have to use this limit as h goes to 0 until we learn it. How many of you guys already know the shortcut? Oh, he hasn't? Okay. Good. So this class doesn't know. The last, my next class is always like, why can't we do the shortcut? I want to do the shortcut. Every day. Yeah. All right. So um, F prime, that means derivative. Okay. Here's these uh, two hot guys here. <laughs> Obviously, they're from the same time period because they have the same hair and the same outfit. <laughs> But uh, this is Gottfried Will Wilhelm Leibniz. Leibniz. It doesn't matter. I believe it's Leibniz. Uh, and Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, so there is a debate on who the father of calculus is. Most people say it's Sir Isaac Newton. But actually, Leibniz, he uh, was doing calculus before Sir Isaac Newton. It's just back in the day, we didn't have the internet and all that. So we couldn't share our, our ideas as easily as we do now. So they had no idea that each other was doing this. Or so they say. Maybe he did. Maybe he found out that he was doing this great new thing and stole it. But who knows? Big math debate. All right, so there are two notations for derivatives. All right, it's very annoying. <laughs> so Leibniz, he does d's. So he'll do things like d dx of some kind of function. So like x squared. So we talk about taking the derivative of x squared. You might also see dy over dx. That means take the derivative of your y function in terms of x. So derivative of y in terms of x. Those are the big, the big two. So. That's kind of what he does, the d's. Sir Isaac Newton is the one that does the primes. So he does like f prime, or you could talk about y prime. 
I personally like the primes. That's how I learned it. But your AP calculus test doesn't care what method you like because it's going to use all of them. So you need to get used to all the different notations. Um, other notations, uh, you could have, I don't know, dx, y, like that. So the derivative in terms of x of your y function. Mm, let me think. I'm trying to think of other things like that's kind of what we talked about before with the x squared. I mean, it can be any function. You'll usually see f prime of x. Like, usually there'll be an x there, not just f prime, f prime of x. I'm trying to think of any more. I think that's about it. So basically, you're really just worried about d over dx. So the derivative in terms of x, derivative of y in terms of x is the same thing, f prime, y prime. Okay, so number one, find the derivative of y equals x cubed plus 4x. Uh, technically, you should say find the derivative of y with respect to x. However, this class is single variable calculus. Um, so if you guys notice your, um, your book probably says single variable calculus. I don't know if you guys have your book. No. <laughs> so all calculus one is single variable. Calculus two, three, four, and advanced calculus. I've taken all of those. Fun, fun. Uh, those are multivariable. So that's when you would take the derivative of things that have x, y, and z in them. So crazy. Does it say single variable? Yeah, last year's said single variable. I have last year's here. Oh, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just have a big one. All right, so, so we're going to go ahead and do the limit thing. So go ahead and try this one. So do the limit as h goes to 0. Remember, this is going to be y prime, so you can write it as y prime now. So y prime equals the limit as h goes to 0. You're going to do x plus h everywhere you have an x. So that's all f of x plus h. Subtract out f of x. and then divide everything by h. Anybody know what x plus h cubed is? x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh cubed, or sorry, x squared. Uh, plus h cubed. Do you guys remember that from algebra too? This is the annoying part about derivatives because it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. So that came from the binomial theorem, remember that? Uh, plus 4x plus 4h minus x cubed minus 4h. All of that's over h. See how I was lazy and just put it all on one? Uh, minus 4h? Minus 4x, yeah. I wrote the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Maybe I'll see their picture taken by then. I think she's um, in the front office. Okay. All right, so now divide everything by h. So it's going to be 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared plus 4. And that's it. So now as h goes to 0, your derivative is 3x squared plus 4. Okay, that's it. So that's basically your slope for any x value.
So if I asked you to find the slope of the tangent line at 1, 5, you would uh, plug in 1 to find the slope and use that with 1, 5. Okay, so let's try this one. So find the slope of the tangent line of the curve y equals 1 over x squared at the point 1 half comma 4. Check your answer by graphing both equations. So you can always graph on your graphing calculator. Your tangent should just barely touch your curve. All right, so your slope is going to be, well, we'll write y prime. Now let me know what y prime is. So y prime equals the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over parentheses x plus h squared minus 1 over x squared all over h I would just go ahead and get common denominators, so I'd multiply by x plus h squared over x plus h squared and x squared over x squared. So you're going to get x squared minus whatever x plus h squared is all over x squared times x plus h squared. Go ahead and leave it factored in case there's something that cancels. So on the top, you're going to have x squared minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared all over x squared times x plus h squared. And then you're going to divide by h, so that's multiplying by 1 over h. So basically, you can put the h down on the bottom with the rest of them. <laughs> OK, x squared and x squared cancel. And then the h is going to go into both pieces. So you can cancel the h, but make sure you're canceling it in both of them. So this is now h to the first. See what I'm saying? You could not be lazy and you could just draw a line through all of it and say minus 2x minus h. So you know that all of that has canceled and became uh, minus 2x minus h. Okay, so I get uh, minus 2x minus h all over x squared times x plus h squared. So is it okay to plug in 0 now? Do you get undefined? No, you don't get undefined, so you can plug it in. So you get negative 2x all over x squared times x squared, so x to the 4. So it's negative 2 over x cubed. That is the derivative of 1 over x squared. So your slope at the point 1 half comma 4, you just plug in 1 half. So it's negative 2 divided by 1 eighth. So negative 2 times 8 over 1. So I get negative 16. So plug in your slope or point slope form. So y minus 4 equals m times x minus 1 half. And that's your equation of your tangent line. So like it said, says, you can graph, and you can uh, see if that actually just touches at 1 half comma 4, and it will, comma 4, and it will.